Hello, welcome to Outbuilding. Today I'm using the van under a little bit of rain to head out and fill the concrete block with um, core material. And the core material, there's three choices for that. There's concrete, there's water mix, and there's grout. And I'm gonna use grout, and I'll explain why in this video. I'll show you how I do it after I run this errand and pick up materials. nice drive it started out rainy it's getting dry now which is great for what I need to do and it's really been nice to be able to load 2400 pounds of um, concrete in there it took about six minutes to load it in there and drive off in the rain and not have to worry about covering or tarping anything and the van actually rides a little bit smoother because it's just got enough weight back there it's, it the van has about 4,000 pounds of capacity and this is 2400 so it's not completely maxed out but it it sits down on the springs a little bit and is a little bit quieter and back even with an empty shell Uncertain, you can see I'm packing for both sun and rain here. As I get set up here, I'll explain the tools I'm going to use, which are pretty simple, but both of them are new to me and it's slightly different than I've used for mixing before. So we'll give it a try. So I'm setting up solar panels just in case the sun comes out later, uh, although even in the clouds, the panels generate enough power to kind of manage the tools I'm using, so it should work pretty well. Even covered up, there was a little bit of water where I didn't want it, and then I needed to get some water collected for where I did want it. So I used a, a little wet, dry shop vac and sucked all the water and the little grits and stuff out of the simu core so that it was nice and clean in there. Kind of interesting as I get a place to work built, I have a much easier time setting up for the next stages with a platform to work on. For mixing, since this is going to be a pretty viscous uh, mix, I'm going to use a big power drill that's plugged into the battery and a egg beater that I bought at the concrete place. And then for consolidating the mixture and making sure that there's no air bubbles, I'm going to use this vibrating wand. And it's a really cheap one that I bought. It was actually cheaper than um, to purchase it than to rent one. And hopefully this thing lives through the project. It looks like as long as I'm careful with it, it should work just fine. So I have to assemble that. It, I'll stick that down in the cores and that will vibrate the heck out of everything and make sure all the air bubbles come out. I think people often call these a stinger.
So with everything all set up, I will go ahead and let the video roll and get started here with some my first bag of grout. And I'm new to this, so I'll just kind of figure it out as I go, and then I'll stop in a minute and I'll give you sort of a, a blow by blow of how I've kind of come to start doing it. So I've chosen to use grout because from what I understand, it's, this, it's the strongest material, it flows the best, and it is really intended for this purpose. Some people use just regular bagged concrete and that the aggregate in that can really kind of stifle getting the air out of it and kind of leave pockets in there so it's not as sturdy. And then you can, a lot of times, like masons will use S-type mortar mix and just fill the cores with that. And from what I understand, that is really meant to be more of a, a glue, if you will, than a structural material, so it's not as strong. So I'm using, this is fine um, grout, and there's also a coarse grout. And I'd probably prefer the coarse grout, but this is what they had when I went to get it. And they both are really well suited to doing this. So kind of have a rhythm now. So I'm gonna show you all the steps that I'm doing in sort of a pattern. And I'm basically covering two cells at a time with the vibrator and then moving forward. But to start with, I cleaned out the, the uh, cores as best I could when I got here. And there's just a little bit of residual water in there. So I got most of it vacuumed out, but I'm just going through before I get to an area, kind of staying ahead of myself. These are actually pretty good, but I'll just, I'll vacuum this out real quick. And when I started, I was getting a lot of water. Now I'm just getting a little bit. So for mixing this, what I'm finding easiest is to first put in some water, and I'm kind of getting a feel for about how much, but, and then I put in less concrete than I think I need so that I kind of mix up a, a really wet slurry. And that'll mix really easily with the egg beater here. because that's mixed really well, then I kind of top it up with the, the dry mix to get to the, the consistency I'm looking for. And I'm trying to mix about a half a bag at a time. That's close, it's just a tiny bit too wet. That looks pretty good, and then that that stays, that, that mixes pretty thoroughly when I've got that wet slurry to start with. Okay, and then when the mix is ready, I come over, and I've been sort of staggering the cells as I go. So these are fully um, vibrated and, and done. These I vibrated once, and I'll come back and catch them, and then I'm filling. So I'm sort of filling like five at a time and working my way through them. So this stuff is, um, almost it almost pours it kind of pours some depending on the mix i get but it goes in pretty easily i'm going to actually take a little bit out of the corner because i'm going to use that for a, a bracket later and i need to have space in there to work with the setting the bracket in place kind of keeping the trowel where i last left off and then i'll vibrate these a few cells and like i've got these are just barely started to fill you'll see these will sink down quite a bit once i get the air pockets out of them and this widget's kind of bizarre. It, it'll, you'll see it'll start and then all of a sudden it'll kind of, it'll hit a zone and then it'll start, it'll start vibrating. And that process just now repeats as I march my way around the wall. So guess which of these three things, the, the paddle for the drill, the vibrator, or the vacuum cleaner uses far more power when I'm using solar panels. I will let you put a comment down below and I'll wait for a bit and then I'll put the answer in there. Karen stopped by, so I stopped for the day and then the next morning I got up and started off on my work day and I feel like I'm walking to the job site, but instead of carrying a lunch pail, I'm carrying a big battery pack on my commute to work.
we got really good weather today, uh, much nicer than yesterday, and it's, it's really clear, so the solar panels should be able to keep up. I had the panels out overnight, and I'll plug those in, but I charged the battery pack overnight, and I'm up to 98%. Yesterday, I kind of was watching it and got down to about 9%, didn't want to have it cut out on me in the middle of a, of a set of um, concrete, so I stopped, and I've got something like 8 out of 30 bags left to go. And so I'll get those in today in the morning here. It should go pretty quickly because now I've got kind of the drill down and all the equipment's here. Put those in and then I'll cover a little bit on what the next steps are with this project. All right, well that was nice to get just the last little part of this done. It didn't take too long, um, and I think part of that was just because I had everything set up. A couple of things I learned from that. One of them is it's really nice to finish up, not at the end of the day when you're running out of food and out of batteries and everything, but in the morning, because now I've got the whole day today and I've actually got a bunch of ideas for things I can do that are essentially yard work that I need to get done around here before I head home. It's nice to have that extra time instead of just kind of putting everything away wet. I ended up having um, just a little bit of con mix left, and so the count worked out well. That was nice to see, and it's actually instructive for when I do the foundations. So the next steps here are gonna be, these rebar are meant to be a little bit long, and I'll come back once this is all cured, and I'll bend them down so that they're horizontal, and then I'll run one more um, loop around here with the number four rebar to create kind of a top bond beam. And then I'm gonna pour a cap. And if you look at cinder block in like gardening and other places, sometimes when it's up on end, especially in a rainy climate with slightly acidic rain, it'll just eat away and you see that the cinder block starts to kind of crumble. So we'll pour in a cap that's probably about three, four inches tall. It'll encase that rebar and bond up this whole top. And these are the brackets I got. They're made in Newport, which is near here in Oregon. It's kind of neat because Simpson is a company that makes these things nationwide and they're really well regarded. And I don't know where Simpson parts are made. I, my guess is China or somewhere else because they're, they're made in such quantity. This is made out of stainless steel and it's to the Simpson specs, but it's made locally by, a, a pretty, I think it's kind of a boatyard because they do so much um, work and there's so much corrosion on the coast here that a lot of this stuff they do is in stainless. So I'm gonna embed these down. That's why these corners aren't completely filled. I'm gonna kind of lace this with a little horseshoe of rebar and sit it down in and pour it into the cap. And then these, these are become the anch post anchors for the canopy that's gonna go over this. This whole basin will get filled and I wanna fill it with something that doesn't compact very well. So I've been pulling out fence posts from an old set of horse pastures that were here that are completely derelict and the, the elk and deer have completely trashed. And I'm pulling out this, the four by fours. I'm gonna use those to build, uh, to repair a bridge we have and deck the bridge with those because I've got so many of them. I'm gonna break up the concrete that's on the end of them as I pull them and put it in this pile here, mix it in with um, some three quarter minus and compact it so that we've got like a, a really sturdy basin because this is really just a big block and we're gonna set a tank on top of here that's gonna weigh many, many thousands of pounds. It's 2,500 gallons of water gonna sit up on top of here at eight pounds a gallon. So those are the next steps on this project. And um, all of this is for the water supply to feed the cabin. And so as I get this done, then we can pressurize the cabin and test this at the height we have and everything and see what the pressure looks like. So if you wanna see how this cap goes together, the rest of this structure, subscribe. This is the playlist for the solar well and drinking water system. 
and there's other playlists for other projects. All these projects are moving towards the, the culmination of building that cabin. So this is the water supply for the cabin and a lot of the other things in the workshop are gonna be for the cabinetry in the cabin. So a lot of these things actually will mesh together in the end. It's been great to try out the van. The van has been um, super useful in this, this capacity and it's starting to teach me a little bit of how we wanna build it out and what we wanna make available in it and how we want that to work as I, as I use it. And it's a little bit like having a brand new pair of shoes. You, you get worried about getting that first scuff on them and so toting around 2,400 pounds of concrete was a good sort of test of that sense and I'll clean it out the best I can, but we're gonna use it for utility. So it's gonna get scratched and dirty and used and used hopefully well and used hard. And as I always say, until I see you next, I'll be out building. Thanks for watching.